Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today is part two of our little nav map series, coming up on this episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back everyone. In today's episode, we will be going over how to create a flight plan. We will also go over all the different data panels around the screen here. Lastly, I'll show you how to export that flight plan so that you can use it inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator. And for anyone that is using VR or only has a single monitor, stick around to the end because I've got a bonus for you to show you how to get an in-sim toolbar icon to show little nav map on. If you have any questions along the way, post those down below in the comments section and I will get right back to you. If the video helps you out, be sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. So before we dive into today's video, there's a couple things that I forgot from part one. If you haven't seen part one, I'll post links down below in the description, or you can click up here. In part one, we go over how to download, install, more importantly, how to set up everything inside little nav map so that you can use it to start your own flight planning. So now let's get into those items that I forgot to go over in the first episode. So the first thing you'll notice, anytime you're moving your mouse across a screen, you'll have this irritating information pop up that's gonna be right next to it. And that can really hinder your ability to create a good flight plan. So let me show you how to get rid of that information box. If you head up here to the top and click on the cog icon, this will open up all the little nav map options. Make sure that you go down and tap on the mapping section on the left. And then over here on the right hand side, under map tooltips, we can untick all of these little boxes. Once we get that done, hit apply, OK, and now we won't have that irritating pop up pop up anymore. The next thing that I would like to go over is up here in the scenery library tab, down on number three, you will have the navigraph menu. Make sure that in this menu, you are using Navigraph for nav aids and procedures to get the best experience out of little nav map. The last thing that I want to go over is something that I did touch on in the first episode. That would be the scenery library. To get there, we can just click on this icon at the top and it will open up the scenery library. Now, I had a couple questions about whether we have to run this every single time or not. And the answer is no. Loading the scenery library from Microsoft Flight Simulator only has to be done one time unless you upgrade and get third party scenery or airports. At that point, you would need to load those in your community folder and then re download or click the load button in the scenery library so that it can download all of that new scenery and airport information. Now, saying that, anyone that is using add on linker. You want to make sure that you input all of these scenery and third party airports inside of the community folder before you load your scenery library inside a little nav map. So before you click on this load button here, make sure that you have all the scenery that you're going to want to use inside the community folder, as well as your third party airports. And if you have any questions on that, just post them down below in the comments section. So the first thing that we need to do to create any flight plan is to have a departure and a destination airport. There's a couple different ways in which we can do this inside a little nav map and we'll go over each of those. If you know the ICAO of the airport in which you would like to depart from, then we're going to utilize the search data box over here on the right hand side. At the very top, we have a couple different tabs, airports, nav aids and procedures you want to make sure that you're under the airports tab for this part of the tutorial. Next, under the ident, we can enter the ICAO of our departure airport. Today, we're gonna to choose BWI, and down here below, you will also see KBWI displayed, as well as a bunch of other information if you scroll to the right. To add BWI as our departure airport into our flight plan, all we need to do is to highlight over it right click, and that will bring up a dialog box. We can then scroll down to where it says set as flight plan departure, left click, and it will now add that to our flight plan box over here on the left. 
Now let's go ahead and add our destination airport. Today we're going to be using KCLT. The next way that we can add that airport into our flight plan is we can highlight or hover over that with our mouse, right click, and again we can scroll down to choose as destination. At this point we are now ready to start adding our departure, arrival, and approach procedures into our flight plan. But before we start doing that, I would first like to head back up here to the search box and talk about another way to find airports. And what I mean by that is, let's say that you're new to a particular area and are unsure of a departure or arrival airport that you would like to choose. The search area here allows us to input some information along with some filters to figure out what airports that you may wish to add into your flight plan. So as long as you know the city, state, or country of the area in which you want to fly, we can enter that information here. So let's just type in Maryland. Next, underneath of that, you want to go through all of these filters and check any of the boxes that are going to pertain to what you're looking for. Keep in mind when using third-party airports, you want to make sure that you click on the add-on airport box here to the left. Underneath of that, we can choose what type of surface we would like to land on, as well as runway lengths. Once you have got all that information in, down below here will show all the different airports that are going to meet that criteria that you have chosen above. You can scroll to the right to show a lot of information about the airports and we can add any of these to our flight plan just by highlighting over it, right clicking and add to our flight plan. The other really neat feature is if you're on a very zoomed out map, so let's say we're really zoomed out here and you want to get a closer look of a particular airport. All you need to do is to double click on that and it will bring it right up close and personal to you so you can see everything that you need to for the airport. Now let's get into the procedures part of the flight planning. Before we can do that, we need to know which are the active runways for our departure and arrival airports. There's a couple ways in which we can do this. So let me show you how to do this using little nav map first. Then I'm going to show you the alternate way. So all you would need to do is to highlight over the airport in question and then right click on that. We can then go down and highlight show information or BWI. That's going to open up the information tab over here on the left. In the overview section, if you scroll down to where it says weather, this is where it will let you know of the preferred runways that are going to be used. Now, as you can see here, we have a variable wind at four knots. So it's not giving us any particular runways to use. So we need to use an alternate way of figuring out which runways are going to be used for departure and arrivals. Down below in the description, I'll have a link for this website. And this is where we can pull up any of the ATIS information for different airports. In the ATIS information, it will tell us which runways are being used for departure and arrivals. As you can see here, the arrival aircraft can expect visual runway approach 33 left and runway 33 right, departing runways 28 and 33 right. So now that we know that, let's bring up all the different departure procedures for BWI. To do that, all we need to do is to highlight over the airport again, right click, and then we can go down and click show departure procedures for BWI. When you left click on that, over here on the right, in the search box, it will switch from airports to procedures and show you all the different departure procedures for that particular airport. Now, at the very top, we also have two more drop downs in which we can choose to see all the procedures, arrival procedures, or only approaches. But for this, we're going to make sure that we stay on departure. This way, we don't get confused with all the different procedures that you're going to see here. Next, under the runways tab, we can also choose which runway that we want to depart from. So this way, again, we can narrow it down a little bit more. Now remember, we can either use runway 28 or 33 right. So let's go ahead and choose runway 33 right. To display the procedures on our map, all we need to do is to left click on any one of these and you will have a blue flight plan line for that particular procedure. Now what you can do is to go through each of the different procedures and figure out which one is going to suit your flight plan the best. 
for us, let's go ahead and use the Fix It 2 departure. And next to that departure, you'll notice a little drop down here. We can click on that drop down, and now we have all the different transitions that we have available for that procedure. Again, to display any of these, all we need to do is to click on the individual transitions and they will populate on our screen for us. Go through each one, figure out which one is going to best suit your flight plan for today. So I think we're gonna choose this one. If you would like to see the different waypoints in this procedure, just click on the drop down, and it will show you all of that information. To add this to our flight plan, all we need to do is to right click and then insert the SID into our flight plan. To the left of that, it's gonna ask us which runways that we're departing from. So we are going to choose runway 33 right. Now once we choose that, you can see that the departure is now in an orange line, and that lets us know that has been put inside of our flight plan. We'll also take a look over here on the left at our flight plan box, and it will now have that departure entered in here. We can scroll to the right, and that will give us all the different flight restrictions, frequencies, courses, distance, winds, and altitude. I've gone in and changed all the different menus that I want to display the information, and I highly recommend you do the same. To do that, you just want to click on the cog right here, and this will open up the little nav map flight plan table. And here you can choose all the different bits of information that you would like to display in that flight planning box. So now that we have the departure entered into our flight plan, let's talk about the arrival and the approach into Charlotte. Again, we can highlight over the airport, right click and hit show arrival procedures, or we can also do it the alternate way. If we go up here to the search bar again, go to airports, type in KCLT, the airport will populate here at the bottom. We can right click here and show arrival procedures as well. At the top, we have the drop down box to show all the arrivals or only approaches. So we're gonna show all of the arrival procedures into KCLT. Before we can choose any approach, we need to know what runways are gonna be in use at that particular airport. So let's try the little nav map way. Highlight over the airport with your mouse cursor, right click, and then we can show information for KCLT. Over here on the left, under the overview tab, down to weather. And as you see, we don't have any runways listed here either. Let's pick an airport and maybe we'll get some information so you can see what that's gonna look like. So let's click on this one and show information there. Okay, so now here you can see under the weather that we have prefers runways 27 and 23. So that's what it'll look like over here on the weather section for the preferred runways. So now let's go back to Charlotte click on the airport info. Again, we have nothing there. So we're gonna use our handy dandy website tool. Once you select KCLT, you'll notice underneath of that, we have either departure or arrival information. Make sure that you tick on the arrival information. And if we just look through the ATIS, it says here that we can expect visual approach for runway 36 right, 36 center, and 36 left. So now that we know we're gonna be using runway 36 right, we can come up here to the runways tab and narrow this down a little bit more. We're gonna go down, highlight, select runway 36 right. Now we can start scrolling through each of these to pick the best one for our flight plan for today. So the arrival that we're gonna be using today is the Chesley 3 arrival. Next to that, we have the drop down box. We're gonna click on that so that we can choose the correct transition. Now, one of the things that you'll notice here in the different transitions, if I just scroll up a little bit, we are actually gonna be at the LYHVOR right here. We check down in the transitions, we have an LYH transition. And if we click on that, you can see that we now have that blue line all the way up to that VOR. To add this arrival into our flight plan, again, we're gonna right click and then insert into our flight plan and we're gonna choose the correct runway. Perfect. Now the last thing that we need to do is enter the approach procedure for runway 36 right. Over here on the right again, we have two different procedures. We either have an ILS or an RNAV. We're gonna choose the ILS for today's approach. Zoom in here a little bit so we can see a little better.
we're going to hit the drop down for the ILS approach and we're going to click on the full transition. We're going to right click, insert, and there we go. We now have our flight plan. Now, one thing that you will notice between this waypoint here and our initial approach fix, there is a dashed line here. This is going to be a point in the approach that is going to be vectored to us by ATC. So if you are using the in-sim ATC, you may not get vectored properly, so you can kind of do your own vectoring here to get to your initial approach fix. In any case, we now have our completed flight plan over here on the left. We can use the scroll bars to scroll through all the different waypoints. So let's take a look at some of these flight restrictions real quick. You'll notice at this particular point, we need to be above 27,000 feet. So let's go ahead and pick 30,000 feet. We can hit enter. And now at the bottom here for our elevation data, you can see our entire flight plan in kind of a profile view. It'll show the top of climb, top of descent, as well as all the different waypoints along the way. You also notice as I'm scrolling my mouse across the bottom here, you'll have a blue circle on the upper map that's gonna be following that. So that takes care of our basic IFR flight planning. Now let's get into more of a freehand flight planning method. So again, we need to start off with a departure and an arrival airport. So we'll choose KILM as the departure. I'm gonna right click on that and we're gonna set as departure. We're gonna use KUDG as our destination. So we're gonna right click on that. And again, we'll choose our destination airport let's say we want to add some waypoints into our trip. Now there's a couple ways in which we can do that. We can either left click on our line and then we can just drag it to the waypoint, left click again, and it will add that waypoint into our flight plan. Pretty simple. Now let's show you an alternate way of adding a waypoint. If we hover over a waypoint and we left click on that, that will bring up all the information over here on the left for that nav aid. As you see, the waypoint name is M-U-L-L-S. And if we head up here to the search box, head over to nav aids, we can type that waypoint in. And down below, we will see it populate. If you left click on it, it will highlight that waypoint with a yellow circle. We can right click on the waypoint and then go down to add to flight plan. Now let's take a look at the destination airport. There's a couple neat features that we can do here on the flight plan. Now keep in mind this flight plan is more of a VFR flight plan, so we're not going to be using any ILSs. Matter of fact, the destination airport is a non-towered airport. If we right click on the airport, we can go down and add a traffic pattern to our flight plan. So if we left click that, it will give us a couple options here for our runways. You want to make sure that you choose the correct runway for the wind conditions. So for the sake of time, we're just going to pick a runway and we'll choose 05. Below that, we have the runway traffic pattern and it will always default to a left hand pattern. And you want to make sure that you check over here in the information under airports and runways for the actual traffic pattern for that runway. Then below that, we can add a downwind to runway, how many nautical miles away we would like to be. So we can set this for three nautical miles. The pattern altitude we have set here is a thousand feet. You wanna just verify that over here on the left and the pattern altitude is a thousand feet. So that's correct. We can also adjust the line color that it's gonna display for us. We're just gonna use that default. Lastly, we have a checkbox here to display an entry and exit indicator We'll leave that checked as well. Then we can hit OK, and it will add the traffic pattern to our flight plan. Now, if for some reason you decide that you do not want to show this traffic pattern on your flight plan, we can remove that just by hovering over the little dot that it made here, right click on that, and then we can remove traffic pattern from the display. Now let's say we want to add a VOR to the flight plan, and we could do that the same way, just by left clicking on the flight plan, 
drag it over the VOR, left click again, and then we can click add VOR to our flight plan. If we want to show the information about that VOR, we can hover over that, right click, and then show information for that. That Vortac, and we'll have all the information displayed over here on the left under the information tab. So that's pretty much all there is to it to freehand a VFR flight plan in Little NavMap. If you have any questions, post them down below in the comments section. So now let's take a look at the other tabs in our flight planning menu. We have a fuel report tab and a current performance. This isn't going to show anything here because we're not actually loaded into the sim, but while you're in flight, this will give us all the current aircraft performance. Before we can actually show any aircraft performance information, we have to make sure that we input the correct aircraft that we're going to be using for today's flight. There's two ways in which we can do that either at the aircraft tab at the very top, and we can open aircraft performance, or if we go to the fuel tab, over here on the right, we have a couple different icons here, and we can add or open aircraft performance. You can also edit it as well. For today, we're just going to open aircraft performance. I went over all of this in part one, so make sure you take a look at that video. Choose the correct aircraft that you want to use for today's flight. Today we're going to use the CRJ-700, and now it will bring up all the different performance parameters for that aircraft. You'll also notice that the flight path along the elevation profile has changed a little bit because it is now going to be matching the performance data for the new aircraft. Before we move any further here, I would like to go over the fuel plan menu inside the fuel report tab. Under the usable fuel, this is going to be the total amount of fuel that this aircraft can carry. Underneath of that, we have the trip fuel. This is how much fuel is going to be used during the trip. And block fuel, this is how much fuel you're actually going to load onto the aircraft before your flight. Underneath of that, we have the fuel at destination. This is how much fuel you will have remaining in your tanks once you get to your destination airport. And underneath of that, we have the reserve fuel or if there was an emergency. All right, now everybody get in crash position. Below that, we have the climb and descent information here for the CRJ-700. Okay, so now that we have finished up with the fuel report and the flight planning menu, let's go ahead and take a look at the information data panel down here in the lower left hand corner. In the information panel, we have a couple different tabs at the very top. We have airport, nav aids, and airspaces. We're gonna go over each of these individually, so let's start with the airport tab. In this tab, we'll display any information for whatever airport that you would like. To populate information in here, all you need to do is to highlight over any airport with your mouse cursor, right click, and then go up to show information and click on the airport. That'll bring up the information for that particular airport. And the first tab is the overview tab. And this will give us some general information about the airport in question. At the bottom here, there are some links for FlightAware, OpenNav, and PilotNav. I highly recommend to check these links out. There's a lot of good information there as well. The next tab that we have in the airport menu is the comm menu. This will bring up all of the different frequencies that we have available for that airport. Next, we have the runways tab, and this will give us all the different information about the individual runways at that airport. So for runway 17 and 35, we can see the runway size, what the runway is made of, and the pattern altitude for that runway if you're gonna be flying VFR or even IFR, and you're gonna be landing via a visual. Below this general information here, we have some more specific information about runway 17. We have the type of lighting that's used on the runway, the glide slope, it tells us what type of VASI lights are used, and it tells us what pattern is normally used for a visual approach. We have either a left pattern or a right pattern. The next tab that we're gonna go over is the procedures tab, 
and this will go over some of the different procedures for the different runways. And some of this information was in the runways tab, but this will be more specifically geared towards the procedures, frequencies, things like that. The next tab that we're gonna go over is the nearest tab. This will give us all of the nearest information for the different airports and different nav aids. So the closest nav aids and airports will be listed first and they get farther as they go down. The last tab at the top we have is the weather tab and this will give us the current weather for that particular airport that we had chosen. So now that we have gone over all the different tabs in the airport menu, let's go over the nav aids tab. Here we can highlight over any waypoint or nav aid, right click, and then show information for that waypoint. And it will give you all the information for that particular waypoint. The last one that we have here is airspaces. And this is pretty important in my opinion. So in this menu, all you need to do is to left click on any airspace and it will then populate that information over here on the left. So if I wanna know all of the flight restrictions for this part of the airspace, I left click that and it will tell me right over here the minimum altitude is 6,000, max altitude is 10,000, and this is a class Bravo airspace. So now let's take a look at an airport that is within the Bravo, but is not a Bravo airport. We're gonna use Concord Regional for this demonstration. And if we left click on Concord Regional's airspace, over here on the left, we can see we have a bunch of different airspaces that are gonna populate here. Now you may be inclined to go with the very first one, but there is a couple identifiers here to let us know which is the correct airspace and not. First off, we have the coloration of the circle over here to the left of the airspace. As you'll notice on the Bravo, we have this lighter purple and for this section is a darker purple. So that's the first giveaway. The second is that it tells us that it is the Charlotte airspace. So we're gonna scroll down to the next one. And this one we can see the circle is a little different color, it's darker. And the airspace tells us this is Concord Regional. That's the one we're looking for. So here we can see the minimum altitude is zero AGL. Max altitude is 3,200 feet MSL. This is also a class Delta airspace. Now if we scroll back up to the Charlotte airspace that is above the Delta, we can see the minimum altitude here is 3,600 feet to 10,000 feet MSL. And if we take a look again at the Delta, we are at max altitude of 3,200 feet. So if you're at 3,201 feet MSL, all the way up to 3,599 feet MSL, you will actually be bypassing both Bravo and Delta airspace. You will not be in either of those airspaces. Another cool feature that the airspaces tab has is if you go next to any of the airspaces, you will see the word map. This is actually gonna be a link that you can click on. So if we left click on that, it will zoom in and highlight the part of the airspace that this is gonna be pertaining to. So this way you won't get confused if there is a bunch of other airspaces listed below. This will kind of narrow it down for you. And again, if we go down and go to the Concord Regional and click map there, it will then zoom in and highlight Concord Regional for us. So this way we don't get confused. If you would like to remove any of the airspace highlights, all you need to do is click the remove airspace highlights and it gets rid of all those for you. Another cool feature about the airspace tab it will not only show us the Delta, Bravo, or Charlie airspace, but it will also give us the center airspace information. So we can click anywhere on this map and it will give us the center information for that particular location. We also have this mapping button. We click on that, it will show us that whole area that is gonna be controlled by this center frequency. Now, if you have any questions on this, please post them down below in the comments section. The very last data panel that we have here is the simulator aircraft data panel over here on the right. So this is gonna show our aircraft, the progress for our aircraft, and it will show us any multiplayer aircraft as well. 
So when you spawn into the sim, you'll be able to see all the different aircraft on your screen. And then you can click on any of those aircraft and it will show that information over here on this panel. Because we're not loaded into the sim, this isn't gonna show us any information, but it's pretty self-explanatory once you spawn into the sim. Now let's talk about how to export that flight plan for Microsoft Flight Simulator. The first thing that we need to do is to go back to the flight plan menu, make sure that we have the correct cruising altitude and that we have the correct type of flight plan, either IFR or VFR flight plan. Next, we're gonna go up to the file menu. Then we're gonna scroll down to export flight plan as MSFS 2020 ELN. Left click on that and another dialog box will open up for us. Here we can select a start position for our aircraft. We can select that and now we can choose where we would like our aircraft to start from our departure airport. Once you have chosen that, we can hit OK. That's pretty much all you have to do to export that flight plan for Microsoft Flight Simulator. OK, so now if you are still with us, you want to see the bonus feature for Little Nav Map. Now what we're going to do is talk about how we can get the InSim toolbar icon for Little Nav Map. The links will be down below in the description, so be sure to check that out. Over at flightsimulator.me, they offer some very, very, very helpful InSim toolbar panels that you can use. There's many different ones that they offer, and I believe it's only five or ten dollars to get all of them. I've gone over this in a previous video. I'll also post that down below in the description for all the applications that I recommend for Microsoft Flight Simulator. After you download this application, you will now have a toolbar icon at the very top that you can click on and open little nav map from within the flight simulator. Now you can't actually do any flight planning or anything like that like you can in the actual application but you can see everything that you need for your flight on this icon. This is very, very helpful, and this has all the instructions on what you need to do to get everything up and running. Check out the link down below in the description if you'd like more information about this application. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that takes us to the end of the video. I wanna thank everybody for joining us today. If you have any questions or comments, post them down below in the comment section and I'll get right back to you. If you haven't done so, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button to all my flight simmer friends around the world. Keep the blue side up, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.